you know, thank you to ARPAF for uh, inviting us to AMA to in come in today and uh, uh, talk to you about primary care networks. Um, they can be a well-known and sometimes um, uh, a not so well-known entity in the province, but they are a crucial platform uh, for providing primary care to Albertans. Um, and Jill, just doing a check that uh, my screen's up and you can see that. Okay, so we've got a, um, a number of slides uh, to go through today and you'll see on the screen, I've noted it as a thousand foot view of what is a PCN. So it is a complex organization. And if we were to go into all the different angles and aspects, I'd have to say we're gonna need two or three hours. But uh, right now we're gonna try to do a thousand foot view flyby to answer at least some of the, the key building blocks of how PCNs are formed. So I'm gonna start advancing uh, the slide presentation. And um, if for those of you who have some questions, I mean, we're encouraging people to put them into the chat box. And both uh, Jen, or sorry, Jill and Holly are, are going to try to answer them. We may, uh, if we have far too many, uh, that's not a problem. Actually, that's that's a great thing. We can uh, collate them and provide some a mail out after to the group. So uh, there's going to be some time at the end of the presentation for a Q and A. But uh, sort of with that being said, let's uh, kind of advance on to the presentation itself. Okay, so. Uh, we too have a land acknowledgement uh, with the AMA, but I'm not going to go through all of that because uh, Jill did a fantastic job uh, of acknowledging um, the land that we are located on. Um, so I'm going to move past that one. But uh, talking to you today is, uh, this is part of a, an RPAP Rural Information Series. Uh, it's a one hour session and looking at uh, the rural uh, Alberta community's uh, health issues. So we're happy to contribute to that by talking about PCNs. So. What are we gonna talk about today? And so we're gonna talk about what is primary care? Uh, what is a primary care network or uh, a PCN? Um, you know, everybody knows the medical world and uh, most uh, administrations uh, love their acronyms. So we're gonna talk about a PCN. We're gonna talk about the history, how are they funded? Uh, what, are, what are they funded to do? Um, the fact that uh, PCNs are, are funded by the province, it's, it's grant funds, it's public money. Uh, the government uh, through Alberta Health also has specific objectives and priorities that they need to have accomplished through the primary care network, so we'll, we'll identify those. And then we'll pop into a Q&A session as well. So, what is primary care? And this is, this is the important thing of like, why do PCNs exist? And they are, exist to enhance primary care. So, a good way to look at primary care is, um, it's the front door, it's your entry portal into Alberta's healthcare system. So it's all the basic services that you need. And we're talking your basic services. It's your initial treatment, your care, your follow-up. It's your doorway. So we want to look at promotion and prevention. And we, we normally consider this to be from, an, from, so once again, I'm from the AMA, right? So we normally consider this from an AMA spec perspective. Uh, primary care is provided by your family physician. Uh, fully acknowledging, though, that there are, other primary, there are many primary care providers uh, in the province. Um, and, and they might come in different forms. And Alberta Health Services provides primary care services as well. But when we're talking about promotion of wellness, or the focus of what this is here, we're talking about where do you go as an individual who has primary care needs? And so um, focusing on uh, the PCNs, uh, this takes care of place in your, in your family physician's office, in your doctor's office, where some medical management takes care of. You're going to go in there for all of your basic needs, whether, you, whether that be a cold or whether you've got an ache or a pain which might need further investigation, which is why there is that reference to accessing the other levels of, of care within our community. It could be specialty care, nursing, ortho, occupational therapy. How do we get you out of, in, out of your, your family's physician and referred out into the other levels of care provided through Alberta Health Services? So, the key word here is patient's medical home, and it's kind of it's, it's kind of an interesting way of looking at your physician's office. Is um, it's a family practice defined by its patients as the place where they feel the most comfortable, the most at home, uh, to present and discuss their personal and family health and medical concerns. And that's um, the PMH. So that's one of our our acronyms is PMH. So patient's medical home. Uh, that's the uh, uh, definition provided by the College of Family Physicians of Canada. So once again, if you look at it as your family physician's office, as your patient's medical home, it's your home to go access all of those primary needs. 
You might be talking to a physician. You might be talking to another one of their healthcare teams, which could be an employee of that clinic, or they actually could be a staff member provided by a local primary care network. So with that being said, what is a primary care network, a PCN? So uh, once again, just explain there, you probably see these uh, um, swoosh uh, logos um, in your physician's offices. Some of you may have uh, taken note of them to say, hey, uh, that of interest to me, or it could have been something that you go, that's interesting. I'm not really sure what it's there for. But Typically, if you next time you go into your doctor's office, take a look at whether they have the, the primary care network's um, logo uh, pasted anywhere in their office. I'd be surprised if they didn't. But primary care networks are the most common uh, model of team-based care um, in Alberta. So that the most effective way of taking care of your health is by not having one specific person, i.e. your physician helping you out. There are multiple people who need to be brought in to help you out with whatever your specific idea or uh, sorry, your, whatever your specific uh, item for care might be. So it's a better way of accessing specific um, and specialty care within primary care, but as well, allowing your physician to pass off some of those um, items to people so that your physician has time to increase their access. So when the physician works with in a team-based care model, it allows them to see more people. And so that's important because we all know that we're, um, we're in a bit of a shortage right now with physicians in the province. So the more way that your physician can be involved in team-based care, the better. And primary care networks definitely support that approach. So team-based care, it's huge. And it's uh, essentially healthcare workers working collaboratively to provide integrated care for all of your everyday healthcare needs. So if you sit, take a look at the diagram on the right, you've got your physician in the middle of that um, um, this or the diagram, and they can actually reach out to various members of team-based uh, care providers. Could be pharmacists, nurses, exercise specialists, mental health clinicians, behavioral health consultants. The um, I guess the depth and the complexity of the services available to your physician when they're involved in a primary care network is a function of how big the primary care network is and is a function of how expensive the budget is as well. So um, it's, it's not too much different than our own household budgets is as we have a certain amount of money that we have available to spend on certain items. The same thing goes for the establishment of the primary care network. So once again, if this was your patient's medical home, you'd go access your physician and that your physician then would have the ability to refer you out or have you looked at by any of one of these individuals. So these are just examples because no primary care network itself um, is identical. There may be uh, key programs that are provided across all PCNs in the province, but there's no one that is identical in their service provision. So, PCN services, how are, they, how are they offered out to patients? Well, it, they could actually happen right in your family physician's office or at a PCN central office. Um, they, they can happen in group, um, patient educational, they can happen face-to-face, -face, uh, they can happen virtual. And they can also happen, happen on one-on-one -on -one consultations. So for example, uh, in the previous slide, if you remember in our little octagon, we had um, dietitians or pharmacists. Those are definitely one-on-one -on -one services, but they can also happen in a group counseling session as well, or, or, or a group uh, session that's focused on a specific health need. And the other thing that your PCN can do in certain occasions is help out with specialist referral coordination. So once again, why team-based care? And it's important to underscore that your family doctor cannot do it all alone. And as uh, family doctors have a wide variety of individuals under their care, as too, they must have access to a wide variety of medical health, uh, medical health professionals who can help them out with your specific health needs. So it's valuable to have your family doctor and healthcare team who understands what your unique health needs are and then get them addressed either through the, the existing primary care system or refer you out, out of the patient's medical home into the, uh, the systems provided through Alberta Health Services and other healthcare providers. So Alberta, we have five zones. The five zones in Alberta match the Alberta Health Services zones. And we've got Edmonton, 
we've got North Edmonton Central, Calgary, and uh, South. And you can see by the way it, uh, the numbers are there is that there's different varieties. Uh, I shouldn't say varieties. There's different numbers of primary care networks uh, across the province. But there is totally, uh, there's uh, currently 40 uh, in Alberta. And I'm going to just pop up a map here. And you can see that um, this, is, this is literally our province and how the zones are divided. And we've got a real um, differentiation between the volume of PCNs. So North has 11. Central 12, and then you can see Edmonton and Calgary um, are at seven and eight, and South has two. Um, the size of the PCNs, so you may have a number of PCNs. So, so let's say, for example, North, North Zone has 11 PCNs, but they really vary in size and the complexity of the services that they can provide uh, to patients. So we've got North that are spread out. In your um, urban zones of Edmonton and Calgary, you've got very large PCNs. So, for example, going back to my um, North Zone example, you've got some PCNs in North Zone that are only populated by, you know, as, as little as 10 physicians versus Calgary, you may have uh, uh, PCNs that up, have upwards of 400 physicians. So there's a real range in size and complexity of PCNs. So I'll go back and stressing again is that uh, PCNs are a physician-based um, organization, and we'll talk about how they are um, created. But if you don't have a family doctor, uh, PCNs have come together with a website. It's called um, Alberta Find a Doctor. So take note of that um, website there, and you can log on and you can search and um, determine which physicians who belong to a PCN in your area are open to accepting new patients. I talked about a variety of programming across the province because once again, no PCN is the same. So if you were to take a look at uh, the different workshops provided by PCNs across Alberta in that um, uh, website address above, you're gonna find anything from anxiety programs, happiness, walking groups, uh, persistent or chronic pain focused groups, um, healthy hearts, ask a dietitian. There's some that are well baby clinics. The, the point we're trying to get across here is that once again, no PCN is alike um, and the programming within your individual PCN is customized to your local area. So let's talk about history. How did these things get started? How did Alberta become the leader in primary care networks across Canada? So back in 2003, um, the, the primary care initiative started and it was called at that point LPCI, which is Local Primary Care Initiatives. And they were they started out small back in 2003. And the first one, the first PCN opened its doors in 2005. And while the slide says there are currently 40 across the province, I think it's really important to note that not everything popped up in, two, after, in 2005. It's been, it's been a gradual increase in PCNs across the province and a gradual increase in the complexity of uh, and the efficiency of how they run. So pretty much from 2005 onward to 2008, 2010, 2015, um, there have been more and more PCNs established across the province. Like, and as I said at the right of the slide, to the point where we have 40 right now. There's no further primary care networks being established in the province. The entire geographic area of the province um, is essentially covered by PCNs, except for a couple of really small areas. Um, but um, there's no need to, at this point, to establishing anything further, because once again, it's pretty much covered. So for this group, did you know that most PCNs serve rural areas? So we're looking at the north, central, and south areas. And there's 25 of the 40 PCNs covered. So that's 63% of the primary care networks are rural-based. So how are they created? So I've been with the uh, AMA uh, since uh, 2010, and I've been fortunate enough to be involved in the actual creation of uh, a number of PCNs. And what I can tell you from this is that um, every PCN starts out with a group of local physicians uh, saying, hey, we've got uh, unmet primary care needs. We need to band together and we need to see what we can do to meet those needs of our patients. So it's important to know that your local area physicians have formed uh, what's called a physician not-for-profit corporation. And it's called for short an NPC. 
And I will say right out from the start, it's just unfortunate those three letters happen to be the same letters of a PCN, but an NPC is not the same as a PCN. The not-for-profit corporation is your physicians who have gotten together and they formed a group. And once that group is formed, it's formed under the Companies Act, it's a legal corporation in Alberta. That legal corporation goes to forward and they say to Alberta Health Services, hey, we want to form a primary care network in, in our specific geographic area. Will you partner with us? Well, of course, Alberta Health Services will want to partner with you. And so they get together and they form a joint venture agreement. It's a partnership between the physicians and Alberta Health Services. And that's actually what forms the, the, the corporation to go forward and manage and create a primary care network. So it's important to know partnership is key here because Alberta Health Services and physicians could not move forward and manage this without working together as a very strong integrated team. Funding is always a question. How do PCNs get funded? And it's not that all of a sudden money drops from the sky. It surely does not. So when back in 2003, when the, uh, the initiative initially started, um, Alberta Health said, okay, we're interested. We're interested in the health of, of, of our patient population. And we want to support this initiative going forward to provide the primary care programming. So they said, okay, here's what's going to happen yeah. is an agreement's going to be formed. So you notice it says JV partners with a star there. And reflect back from the previous slide. So the joint venture partners are the Physician Not-for-Profit Corporation and Alberta Health Services. So they get together and we're just going to call them the JV partners. And they form an agreement with Alberta Health for Alberta Health to fund the primary care network. So Alberta Health provides PCNs with per capita grant funding for each patient who is paneled to a PCN member physician. So Alberta Health says for every paneled patient, you get $62 per year. And what does paneled mean? So simply that your physician considers you their patient and that you see them for your primary care health needs as they are your doctor. A really basic way of understanding is if you are a panel patient, is if you can call up your doctor's office and say, hey, this is Roger, I'd like to come in and see Dr. So-and-so, uh, when's the next available appointment? If they say yes, that means you're a paneled patient. You have access to see that physician. This is not a walk-in. This is, this is in your family physician's office. Unfortunately, if they say no, that would mean that you're not uh, paneled to a physician and that you would need to reach out and find a physician. So PCN budget is, the, the, so the primary care network is that operational program that is going to deliver the services. But their budget is calculated very simply. It's the number of panel patients times by 62, which also means that the PCN budget, it varies by PCN size. So when you have your large PCNs of 400 um, physicians, they are obviously going to have a, a larger ability to attract a larger grant fund from the government versus some of the smaller rural PCNs who might only have 12 or 15 uh, physicians paneled. So it does vary, and it does vary by, by complexity and programming across PCNs um, and through rural versus urban. So here comes the, the magic. Like, what are they funded to do? Well, PCNs play an essential role in your primary health care. So if you hopefully have picked up uh, so far in the conversation that you've had with me today, is that we're looking at a specific program to your local region. So it is customized to your population health and new programming, new programming or existing health program for Alberta Health, health Services. We can't have um, a duplication of programming in a primary care network that is already provided by Alberta Health Services. That simply doesn't make sense. We want to provide funding or programming that is not available in the community. So that's why the PCN programmings need to be unique to that area. So PCN clinical programming across the 40 is not identical and it matches the specific population health needs. So Alberta Health Services already provides community-based primary care programming and PCNs also provide community-based programming. So once again, stressing 
we cannot duplicate what is provided. So it's important that back to that J, the JVA acronym, so the joint venture partners, it's important that they work together, which they do, because both the, both Alberta Health Services and the physician, not-for-profit corporation, work together to create a business plan. And that business plan is funded uh, by the amount of patients paneled at $62 a person, and they create a unique business plan to meet the local health needs, which is supported by the existing AHS programs in the community. So once again, local health needs funded by Alberta Health, which are not overlapping or duplicating anything that is provided by Alberta Health Services. So let's take a look at some of the unique programs to deliver to patients across the province. In the North Zone, in Peace Region, we've got a, a prenatal care program. In Grand Prairie, a persistent pain program. The persistent pain name used to be, you might've heard it as a chronic pain program, but essentially it is a pain, it's a, it's a well-accessed pain program that is unique. It's the only one like it in the North Zone. In Edmonton Zone, in Sherwood Park, they have a change program. In Edmonton Southside PCN, they have kitchen, kitchen basic workshops. The kitchen basic workshops are fantastic because they're, they're specifically focused and geared towards the diabetic population. And they're looking at making proper health, healthy meal choices. They even have some programs that will actually go out and help um, the diabetic um, focused population on proper meal planning, as well as proper gro grocery shopping, even down to the point of understanding what the nutritional values are on each one of the labels of the individual food items they, they might need to purchase. So that's an education and a participation program. In Central Zone, Amros has a geriatric assessment programs. Red Deer has a strong and steady uh, falls prevention program. Calgary Zone, craving change program. Calgary Foothills has, has a compass for the caregiver. South Zone, Palliser, the gift of hope is community mental health. So you can see though, um, in addition to the programs I've, I've identified here, there are other programs that happen within the, the PCNs, but these are, the, are some of the ones just to identify that there is a uniqueness to each PCN, their health needs and their community needs. Back to the original question at the start of the, um, the program, which was, um, if the Alberta government through the Ministry of Health is going to say, hey, we're going to give you uh, a funded, a grant funded program to deliver primary care, we need you to follow some specific objectives. We need you to attain and achieve these. So PCNs uh, through the PCN policy manual um, are bound by providing programming that fall into these four big buckets. So it's accountable and effective governance. So establish clear governance rules, structures and processes. That goal specifically applies to how do the physician not-for-profit corporations and Alberta Health Services through their joint venture, how do they operate to make sure that the decisions, the programming needs that they create, that are how do we how do they make sure that they're making the best decisions and providing the best um, efficient, the most efficient way to deliver those services? So that's a governance, it's an administrative goal. The second one was strong partnerships of transitions of care. It's to coordinate with um, um, and partner with health service and local uh, other service providers. So if you remember back to that slide where we had the little stop signs, it's important that your patient's medical home and your physician and the PCN that um, supports that physician has the ability to reach out to community-based services and to also understand, say for example, if you were a patient and you left your patient's medical home, you had to travel out of your community into a hospital, how does your family physician know that you've been admitted, you've been discharged, and how do we coordinate some of that care? So that when we talk about a transitions of care, it, it looks at something like, it's called a hospital to home to hospital approach, where if, um, if you, for example, if you could be someone from Peace River and you're in, you actually get injured, unfortunately, in Calgary, and you get admitted to hospital, how does your family physician back in uh, Peace River become aware that this has happened to you? And how do they have access to some of your health records? It's important to ensure that there is a collaboration and continuity of care. The big one here, the blue, health needs of the community population. So Alberta Health Services and the physician group, they need to work collaborative, collaboratively to understand what specifically is a, an unidentified or, sorry, an identified but untreated 
health need of your community. So that goes back to the uniqueness of primary care networks. So they need to ensure that they're planning uh, service delivery based on high quality assessments. Alberta Health Services has an access to amazing health data about your different areas, as does Alberta Health. You, com you combine all the data with the frontline experience and the direct hands-on discussion and insight from your physicians, and you've got a powerful combination there of what the specific community needs to move forward to address those health needs. And the patient's medical home. You need to ensure that the physician's office is being supported by the, uh, the, the PCN. And the PCN will, will have a number of programs specifically, as we've kind of highlighted today, to bolster the physician, to help the physician see as many patients as possible, and also have the ability to access um, all of the services provided through their primary care network. So that's, that's the suite of the four major buckets and the four major goals, from, a, from governing right down to developing and ensuring those programs exist um, and are supported in your physician's and uh, your family physician's office. And that is going to bring me to the end of the presentation. And I recognize it was pretty high speed. And I recognize you probably have some questions out in the audience, but I just wanna say that there are some resources available. Um, first of all, um, you can look, you can come go onto the um, EMA website. So it's called ACT, which is the Accelerating Change Transformation Program. That's who I work for. And you can go on ACT, you can go on Alberta Doctors, Alberta Health Services, and you can also go learn at the AMA because there's opportunities to go in and start to understand how this works. And you've also got an amazing resource in Holly, and she can also uh, provide you with an opportunity to uh, refer you back to me, or you can provide your information or ideas back to her to uh, provide a future um, session where if, if I have the opportunity, I can come back and talk to you again. Sounds good. So thank you, Roger. We actually have a few questions that I'm going to help with um, yeah. the chat. So the first question that came through was, how do physicians determine which PCN they join and where they are practicing? Ah, so that's a great question. So um, once again, it's locally based, right? So there's going to be a geographic based. Um, and, and considering that we are looking at rural, a rural focus, um, I'll just take, for example, I know there's some folks on the line from Peace Region. So any of the physicians who are fit the Peace are, are, are based within that area will join their local primary care network. Um, there is no specific rule that says that a physician from Peace Region um, cannot join a primary care, care network from Camrose. But at the same point, you'd have to ask yourself, how would that physician benefit their patients from joining a PCN outside their geographic location. So it is all geographic based um, because the programming for the patients is locally based. So you would expect that um, it is geared towards people in their own physician's locale or where they physically are located. It gets a little messy though, I will say, when we're dealing with the large um, urban areas um, in Edmonton um, and Calgary. Um, because you might have somebody living in South Calgary um, and you might have their physician in North Calgary. So the, um, the bigger point is, is that within the Calgary region, uh, it is a very condensed area. Um, the programming that would be available to that individual patient likely is not too far for them to drive to. So it's less of an issue in, in uh, urban versus rural, rural. As is, for example, someone based in Medicine Hat as a physician, probably wouldn't want to uh, go and access programming that's uh, being provided to patients in Lethbridge. They could, but it wouldn't really um, make all that much sense. Okay, thank you. Um, this, this person has sent in a question regarding um, office assistance. She says, I would like to know if a PCN's host medical office assist, if they host medical office assistant students and health unit clerk students for practicums. And if they do, do PCNs request, oops, sorry, go ahead and answer that one first and I'll continue. So I think the question is geared to is uh, within the physician's office, uh, do they, uh, is it that does the physician office host uh, practicum students? 
Well, I think it's um, the PCNs themselves. If they right. if they host the medical office assistant students or the health health unit clerk students. Yeah. So um, because the the, the PCN um, is based on public money, they they cannot uh, work directly or fund any any sort of uh, program or staffing within a physician's office. Physicians are still uh, fee for service individuals, and they have their fee for service clinics. So any any um, opportunity for a physician clinic to hire their own people would uh, would solely and one hundred percent fall on the responsibility of that clinic, not the primary care network. However. PCNs may have occasion to hire specific um, other other different uh, healthcare providers or administrative support. So it's kind of a yes, and but it's it's two different streams. Okay, thank you. Is the customization of services provided by PCNs determined by the availability of providers or community patient need? Community patient need. So. Um, that's a great question because let's just say, for example, if one specific town, let's just say Brooks, all of a sudden had an influx of 1,000 physiotherapists, we're not going to actually start to develop a program to deliver physiotherapy. There has to be a community-based need for that. So it's all community-based and health need decision, decision making. Are there any measures in place to ensure that service equity between rural and urban PCNs, um, given the per capita funding model? That's a great question. And uh, the, under the current funding model of $62 per patient, um, there's unfortunately no way to, I guess I'll, I'll just use the term level out the playing field um, in that uh, because it's geographically based, it's attached to physicians, it's grant funded per patient. Um, the model works um, uh, as, a, as, as a per capita funding, what you're getting at though is population-based funding, which might level things out. So as PCNs progress, so has the discussion about what's the best funding model to ensure equity amongst programming, and we're still getting there. So there is some, there, I'll, I'll just, I'll be honest, there's some disparity between the, the volume of the program. Uh, another question, and I have two that kind of relate, I think, so we may, I may try to jump, uh, lump them together. Who yeah. can access PCN services? Is it only the people with a family doctor or can others also access? And if a person does not have a family doctor, then, and they are not part of the PCN, do they depend on the emergency department doctors? Mm, it's kind of a loaded question, that one. So I understand what, what the, they're getting at. So um, one of the issues is that if you don't have a family physician, where do you go for your primary care needs, right? And a lot of time the, the default organization for that is, is AHS through the emergency departments, right? So um, emergency departments are in, a, in the AHS world, like tertiary care, or they're sorry, an acute care, emergent care setting. So they don't have access to PCN funds there. So they can't, from an emergency, be involved in getting any PCN programming. So the way the current model is structured is that you need to be attached to a physician who is part of a primary care network. However, I do know that um, depending uh, PCN to PCN, there are accommodations made so that if people who are not part of um, a direct attachment, they can have patient access as well, but that's based on a PCN by PCN uh, assessment. Can you clarify the joint venture partners contract that you mentioned with mm -hmm. Alberta Health or AHS? So that's a whole day. <laughs> But uh, long story short, uh, the joint venture agreement. Uh, Holly, am I okay to just stop the share, or do you want yeah, me? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to stop the share. Um, the joint venture agreement is is it once again a partnership between the local physicians um, and the and local AHS representatives, and it essentially establishes a legal model uh, by which the uh, PCN can operate. And the legal model is what uh, takes us into the governance. If you remember the, the four buckets of um, priorities that Alberta Health wants to share it happens. So that, that joint venture agreement establishes the governance format of how the PCN programming is determ determined, how it, uh, it is delivered, how it's evaluated, and how it's actually um, uh, modified going forward. So um, it, it's, um, it, it basically binds the not-for-profit corporation to Alberta Health Services 
Um, and then Alberta Health comes back and says, okay, we're going to fund your business plan based on what you guys have determined. Like I said, it's a whole, it's a whole day. So <laughs> sounds like another <laughs> seminar. It is um, another seminar. I, I'm not sure if you can answer this one as it, it may need to go elsewhere, but we'll give it a go. How do patients get referred to a specialist if they are not on a doctor's panel with the PCN? That's a great question. So how, how would, if, if someone needed to see, to be referred to a specialist, uh, you would, uh, in my mind, you would go to a, an, an, an acute care or um, an episodic care center, such as a walk-in clinic, um, or you'd be, un, um, I guess, left with going to whatever the, um, in your community, what might be your, you might have an outpatient clinic, you might have an after-hours clinic, or you might have your emergency department. So that would be the, without having that patient's medical home, that would be your route that way. Um, where was the first PCN pilot? Ah, so the first, first PCN was, was created in Edmonton in 2005, and that was Edmonton South PCN. Thanks, that was an easy one. Yeah, this is turning into trivia, it's great. Do PCNs have any impact on helping to increase services to rural Alberta? Well, yeah, well, so most definitely, right? So. If 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 uh, if rural Albertans um, in your PCN geographic area are service deficient in a, in in, a, in in an area, uh, that's exactly and it's a, and if it's a primary care um, uh, bucketed program or need, that's where the primary care network can step in and provide that. But um, I'll I'll just give you know a very folksy way of looking at it. If your budget is only big enough that in a primary care network, then you can top. And then you can only find the top three out of the top nine needs of your community. The, the fourth need in that community is going to go um, uh, unaccessed, untreated, um, um, and unattended through either uh, the primary care network or AHS. That's just the reality of the, the, the depth of the, the, I guess, the, the budget that the PCN has to work with. Um, are you working with Alberta Health to include nurse practitioners as, pri or as providers? Yes, Alberta Health has a number of uh, NP um, programs that are partnered with primary care networks. So the answer there is definitely yes. Uh, the nurse, the NP programs are are uh, actually alive and well in in the north. Um, the uh, one of the issues we run into is that uh, NPs are very hard to get hold of. That's the, what's one of the issues there. So the demand for nurse practitioners uh, to provide that extra angle is, is not something that a PCN would say no to. Once again, as long as it's in their business plan. Oh, I have a follow-up to NPs before I move to the next one. Will NPs be included in forming a P, a PC, in the forming of a PCN once they provide their provided billing abilities? Uh, it's, I'll just say this, it's possible. So when you're looking at advancing the funding models, um, if the nurse practitioner can is allowed to be included in that funding, so to increase the panel, if you remember how I said the funding is based on paneled patients, um, I'll say it's a possibility. Lisa, do you want to come off mute and just give a quick blurb on what that looks like? Sure. Um, so yeah, Cold Lake PCN is run by nurse practitioners, actually. So all the programs are based around the nurse practitioners and they do have panels there in, in Cold Lake. So um, they do have um, some walk-in clinics as well. And some physicians are a part of that, but a lot of it is run, are run by NPs. So huge benefit to Cold Lake. Hey, I do have one more question and then I'm going to turn it to Jill and then we'll open it up for others to come off mute and ask questions as well. How do the community health assessments occur to identify community needs? Uh, so that's part of the business planning process uh, where um, your local AHS representatives, such as Lisa, who just came on, on the, the call here, work with the executive director of the primary care network and the, and the physicians within the not-for-profit corporation. So they're going to take, um, you're going to have an existing business plan. There's going to be a ton of community consultation. So as you're going to consult with the patients, you're going to consult with the physicians, and it's going to be some uh, objective evidence-based decision-making based on numbers from health data from Alberta Health and health data from Alberta Health Services. So um, I can speak specifically to the North Zone. There's open houses um where the, the public is invited to come and talk about and see what the pcn has to plan and they can go in and you go back and talk to your physician right 
How does a physician who is new to the community go about joining and buying into a PCN? Ah, okay. So uh, a physician does not have to phys uh, physically buy into a PCN. Uh, so it is their not-for-profit corporation and the way they're set up uh, is under the Companies Act, uh, if anybody's uh, you know, curious about that. But so they don't have to buy a share. They just actually have to apply for membership. And the board of directors of their local not-for-profit corporation, so the board who are the physicians, will um, accept that physician into uh, the PCN. And how did it become available? Is that um, I think the group would smile and agree with me that as soon as a new physician comes into the community, everybody knows they're there. And at the same time, the executive director of the primary care network will reach out to that physician and say, hey, we want you on board. And so there's no purposeful exclusion. Actually, we want inclusion because that, that, that physician will become part of the individual who is responsible for supporting the health and upgrading the health of uh, their patients and their panel of patients. Can PCNs combine to get a service into an area in need where the numbers cannot allow a PCN to operate on their own? Uh, most, most definitely, but um, I would have to say that every geographic area in Alberta is covered by the uh, by a PCN, and I'll say with the exception of probably Jasper. So thank you, Roger, for sharing more about the PCNs with us today. I feel like the more informed we are as citizens about things like this happening in our communities, the better equipped we are to help. I appreciate that, Jill. And I would encourage everybody on the, on the call today is next time you go see your family doctor, ask them about their PCN. Ask them what their information is. Uh, become engaged. Uh, become involved in the discussion. Uh, patients, I'm serious, patients matter, right? The patient voice is important. So become involved, become active.